Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar tonight. The heat turns and former Petroleum Minister Desiani Alison Maduake as London Metropolitan Police arrest her in the United Kingdom. Presidency declines comments on the arrest, also refuses to confirm if the arrest was made on Nigerian government's request. Military Pensions Board to weed out ghost pensioners begins biometrics. And European Union imposes travel ban on three Burundi officials accused of abuse of office. On business news tonight, banks earn 740 billion naira from CBN on cash reserve ratio review. And on sports news tonight, Nigeria's the Tigresses mixed next year's Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro after crashing out of the 2015 Afro Basket Championships in Cameroon. We'll begin with this report from the United Kingdom that former Petroleum Resources Minister Mrs. Daisyani Alison Madweke has been arrested. Reports say that Mrs. Alison Madweke was arrested today in the British capital by the UK National Crimes Agency for alleged offences bordering on bribery, corruption and money laundering. She's said to have been arrested along with four other people who are yet to be identified. Mrs. Alison Madweke was, however, granted bail by the Magistrate Court in London after being detained for several hours by the police. She has been prosecuted for money laundering. The immediate past Petroleum Minister is reputed to have been one of the most influential members of former President Goodluck Jonathan's administration. A few days ago, at the United Nations General Assembly, President Muhammad Buhari made an appeal to world leaders to assist Nigeria in repatriating billions of naira stashed in banks in several countries abroad. In the meantime, the presidency has declined to comment on Desiani Anderson Maduke's arrest. When an official of the presidency was asked to confirm if the arrest was based on the request by the federal government, his re response was, quote, I will get back to you, end of quote. Latest reports on the former petroleum minister's arrest says that the former minister's house in Abuja was also ransacked earlier today by security operatives and some vital documents were removed. Operatives from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, who carried out a search on the Asokoro Abuja home of the former minister, also sealed up the house after the search. A security source says that most of the documents recovered from her house are vital documents that will be used to prosecute the case against her. October 1, Nigeria's Independence Day may have come and gone, but the salient points of the President's speech will certainly be talking points for some time to come. A clarion call for patriotism is one key area the President Muhammad Buhari asked Nigerians not to think about the current challenges, but to focus on honouring the day. Nigeria's number one citizen also says that he knows that Nigerians want quick solutions to problems, but they should be patient with him, especially with the issue of his cabinet. He goes on to applaud Nigeria's former president, Goodluck Jonathan, for his decision to concede defeat during the last general election. Terrorism was always going to be prominent in the president's speech, and the president did not disappoint as he assured Nigerians that the military has taken the battle to the insurgents. He goes on to touch on the efforts being made to sanitize the power and petroleum sectors. And in line with President Muhammad Buhari's call for patriotism, former President Olusha Gonobasanjo believes that the president's plan can be better actualized if Nigerians give him their full support. The president in his uh, statement said, said Nigeria had the uh, marks, the making the potentialities of a great nation is just question of now actualizing our potentialities and that will require all hands on deck um, men women uh, muslim christians uh, young and old uh, irrespective of our location, our tribe, our uh, hands on deck. And we must also realize the important, important uh, issues that we must not play with. 
We must not play with the issue of education. We must not play with the issue of health for our people. We must not play with the issue of employment for our teaming population and particularly for our youth. We must not play with the uh, issue of employment, uh, of uh, the economy. We must not play with the issue of security and peace. We must not play with the issue of justice. We should justice and peace go hand in hand. Nigeria's former president, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, now to take a look at the president's speech, I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by a public commentator, Mr. Johnson Juko. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on the news at 10 at this time. First of all, the former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Desiani Alison Madueke, arrested in the United Nations, in the United Kingdom. And then we have confirmed reports that she's been granted bail. What do you make of this arrest? Well, um, as you rightly pointed out earlier in your news, that uh, she was one of the most influential ministers under the immediate past government. And uh, there have been a lot of issues around the NNPC, around the um, process of oil sales, several issues that had in the limbs of speculation. Probably what the government tried to do is to find out if they are, those issues are genuine, if she was involved in any form of malfeasance, and then I'm sure if they find her uh, culpable in any of those issues, they will prosecute her. But the basic thing is that the law is taking its course. Uh, she has been arrested at Gratted Bell, and um, investigations are going on. And I believe if she has done anything wrong, she should be able to be ready to account for it. Interesting. Okay, let's now come back to the main issue of the day, the President's broadcast. I'm sure you did hear about it and some of the uh, salient points that he, he mentioned. Uh, let me just pick up from his, his speech, saying that he doesn't want to be feared, but people should be accountable for their actions. How potent would you say this statement is? Well, you know, earlier in his uh, inaugural speech, he had actually said that he belongs to nobody and he belongs to everybody. He subsequently said that, look, he is not out on any vendetta, that he is not bearing grudges against anybody, that it's going to be fair to everybody, and that people should, in his independence, he said people should not be afraid of him because he's not going after anybody, but they should be accountable to their actions. So it is now left for us to watch how he implements those policy fundamental statements. Mm. And basically, if a president wants to unite the country, I think the basic thing is he has to be fair to everybody. And that's why he has made his statement. So we will now expect him to walk his talk. And it's at that point that Nigerians, in the course of his four years administration, Nigerians can, Nigerians can actually say he has actually spoken well and he has actually implemented. But the basic thing is that those are fundamental truths that he has said. They are fundamental to the hmm. unity of this country, that the president must be neutral and must be firm. And that's why he said. I'm not going to go after anybody on personal grudges, based on personal grudges. Mm. But if your actions have injured the national interest of this country, I will hold you accountable for it. Interesting. He has also been speaking about the time he needs to implement his policies. Give me more time, he says. Does, does he really need more time? Well, I think that's an area that I, I think uh, the president needs to speed up his uh, run rate. Um, today we've spent almost four months into a four-year uh, tenor. And uh, the ministers are just, the list are just been sent to the uh, National Assembly. We may not have the ministers working to the end of, until the end of this month. So I think the, uh, the, the president, in as much as I agree, the need for tolerance, mm. need for put in place the structures, but the president may need to move at the first rate. Because but, but Nigeria, he's, he's also defended his late release of the names for the minister. Yes. Uh, what but, do you make of that? Well, he has always he said that he needed to study the handover notes. I have a slightly different opinion on that. You see, basically, governance is a collective effort. I don't know what an individual can achieve alone govern a country as complex as Nigeria. I have always believed that if you select a strong team, they will help you go through whatever complex issues that you need to go through. All you just need to do is mm. define what is your focus, define your primary objective, define your strategic mission, and then your team, the complement of ministers that work with you, will help you put together 
a, the, the necessary structures mm. to accomplish your primary objective. I think having waited for four months to have the ministers... It's enough time. It's more than enough time. In fact, it's actually... So are there other areas that you feel that the president missed out in his speech? Well, the president's speech, looking at it, um, uh, I, I, I think he should have dwelt more on the economic orientation of his government. Probably we need to wait for the ministers to come in, mm. and then we have a clear definition of what the economic orientation will be. The minister made an allusion that the government will work on improving on the refineries, and those refineries can be, that can actually be fixed will be fixed to reduce the importation of petroleum products. The agitation in the private sector has been that the refineries refiner should be sold. The private sector is seeking that the president should deregulate the mm. downstream sector of the near petroleum industry. But those so much. things are missing in his speech. My I think he was a bit silent on some core economic mm. philosophies of the government. I'm afraid I'm going to have to uh, uh, put it at that. I want to thank you so much indeed, Mr. Johnson Chuku, a public affairs commentator, for your time and your thoughts. My pleasure. In part two, after the break, River State Governor Nyasun Wike calls for four more witnesses at the election petition tribunal to testify that he won the elections conducted by INEC. That's in a moment. Stay with us.